right, everybody. Welcome to the Rocket X Podcast. I am your host, Victor Redcore. Today, I got a fun guest on here. I, you guys have probably seen them banter back and forth. The meme wars. I mean, I think y'all had a lot of fun with that. I know we did. Every day, I was like trying to throw some haymakers at him. He threw them back at me. The last couple of weeks, things got a little touchy, you know, and some stuff where, you know, some things were said. My face didn't turn red, by the way. He beat me up, but I didn't turn red. I actually... I turned a little pink, but I wasn't red. But yeah, we're, you know, I wanted to bring Willie on because honestly, at the end of the day, right, like we're all contractors, we're all working hard, we're always trying to get that, you know, have fun with it. But at the end of the day, man, we got to also understand that where everybody comes from and we want to get the both sides of the story, right? Like he didn't come in and just try to beat me up. Like he had, a, he had something he wanted to put behind it. So uh, Willie, man, welcome to the podcast. Introduce yourself and uh, let's just have a little bit of fun. Thank you. I'm um, Willie Ward, 32 HVAC owner. I've been doing it for about 12 years, my daughter turned 12 in May, so 12 years will be in the field as well. So I'm out here fighting just like everybody else, just trying to get my foot off the ground and do it the right way with different processes, so yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it sounds, it sounds similar to me, man. I got into A-Track because when my daughter was born, man, she turned, she'll be turning 10 this year, uh, but she's about five months old when I got into A-Track in 2015. And she was my driving force, right? Like, I didn't, I don't know about you, but I had really no direction. I was kind of a degenerate. I partied all the time. I was living in a fucking room in a house, kind of living like I didn't really have any goals or aspirations. And then little princess shows up and all of a sudden you got to change, you got to change up pretty quick. Uh, you want to talk about like, what were you doing before you got into H-Vac and, and how did that impact your daughter being born help you get into it? I was, before my daughter was born, I like, I really, really wasn't doing it. I was a couch potato, dropped out of high school, which is doing nothing, just on the couch, hanging with the bros, in and out of the streets. But my, I remember my mom told me about an HVAC school program that was offering trade school, and I ended up signing up for school. As I remember while I was in school, I ain't gonna lie to you, I learned nothing in school. I was just... <laughs> it's funny, because like everybody that comes out of school, they try to get a job, they're like, I got my EPA, I'm like, you don't know shit. It's because it's quick. They try to jam it in 12-month program. Sometimes, it depends on what school you're in, sometimes they do, they, they don't really do like in-field training, so you don't on brazing and air condition don't make sense so you're not getting the true temperature in the true environment in HVAC like tight attics on the crawl spaces, just stuff like that. So, I mean, that's something I've talked about a lot is trade school reform, man. I think there's a lot of stuff that they leave on the table, not only on the technical side, right? But even on the on the communication side and understanding how you make money in this business, right? Like you take a lot of guys, I feel like a lot of guys go to trade school, like they didn't have any like technical background. They didn't really have any, like any background in sales or anything. And then they're like, they're going to school because they saw a commercial and they want to have an opportunity to make money. And they think they're going to school and they're spending, they probably spent 10, 15, mm-hmm. 20,000, maybe 30,000. Yeah, school, school, cheap. They got to get out and get a career. And then by the time they get out, they can't even find a job, right? Because, you know, what you learn isn't enough. And, and I, that's one of the things I talk about. And I actually, I volunteer at my local trade school. Uh, I go down, I talk to them. I talk about like, hey, you know, these are clear paths. It's like you can go to the commercial side. If you want to do a residential, you got to learn this, this, and this. And I really try to help as many of those guys understand how to make money in this trade. And and I think that's a big part of it. I think that's, I think we fail a lot of people and we think that, you know, these trade schools just really maybe, you know, they need someone to step up. They need a little bit of help as well. Is that kind of how you felt getting out of there? Lucky me, like, uh, I just always had, I was always driven. So when I got out of school, I had, I'd never forget this. I had a Crown Vic. This back when Crown Vic was like everything back then. Every- I fucked with the Crown Vic. I'm a big boy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> While I was in school, I think I had got like at least about 10, 12,000. That was my largest thing. I think I, I blew that money within two months. I bought, I ain't need, this is how stupid I was with my money. I paid a half down on the Crown Vic. I didn't even pay it off. I'm not sure why. I could have paid it off right then and there. Half down was doing payments. And I never forget, I was in a house, I was in school. I just took my exam and uh my 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 daughter mom called me saying it's time for the baby to come. So I'm in my crowd Vic driving down about 60, 80 on the highway going to the hospital. Don't say drive like a boat too, it's like a float around that shit. So I was in the hospital and they take they have you in, in the room and then they take you to the main room for the delivery room. So why in that transaction I had homework to do and I was going back to my car to get my HVAC books. I never forget it. I saw my car leave the parking lot. I'm thinking somebody stole it. So I'm also Forrest Gump stuff, just running to the car, thinking somebody stole it. Whole time it was the repo man. So it was like, shit oh, hit me hard. Like yeah. it was like, you can't go no lower than that. Damn, that's fucking brutal, man. <laughs> How they, they put GPS yeah, in that they piece? Keep, they found they, you pretty quick. Then, they keep GPSs in the car. He never told, like he specialized in selling Crown He's like the Crown Beak man. Uh, I stayed in Columbia, South Carolina, so he was like the crowd big man everybody go to, but he had GPSs in the car low key, so I mean, he found out where it was at. 
I never forget that day. Well, you know, like in a lot of you know, there's probably got a lot of guys listening that been through the same shit, man. Like, you know, when I got I got in the trade, you know, literally nine years ago in March is when I got I started yeah, last month, nine years ago, man. I dude, I was broke as fuck. I was driving a ninety two Honda. It was a beater ass car, had the windows didn't roll down. Like, I got I swear I remember going to the going to my interview and I had to drive there and it's a fucking rain splattering me in the face, right? And then I got the job opportunity and like I still remember like I had, Craigslist ass like, Oh, we're gonna pay you sixty grand a year, we're gonna train you how to do this, you're gonna get benefits and I'm like I got a five month old baby. I'm like that all sounds great because I would be trying to apply to new jobs, be a trash guy or whatever I could to get to be able to make some money to support my kid. I remember going through training, man. Like I was going through training. Like I don't know how I'm gonna survive this shit. Like I mean, I was stealing the cup of noodles out of the break room. I, I would, you know, I was trying to like my 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 chick at the time was like send me like this tiny little like little food or whatever we could afford to send me. And I'm like just let me in the fucking field. Like like I, people don't understand. Like you know when you never when you're fucking broke. You're willing to yeah, do whatever yeah, the fuck absolutely. it takes. I'm, this 10, 10, 10 or 12 week program, I'm like, let me the fuck out. I'll be your number one fucking sales guy. Give me the fucking thing. Let me sell. Like, I'll be, give me the, give me the ball, yeah. coach. Like, it was fucking brutal was trying to go through training. There was other guys in there going through the same struggle as me, man. They were dropping mm -hmm. out, right? They're because they, they had to go. And I got the, I got lucky that I was able to make it through that. But, you know, you know, I think a lot of people that are listening kind of reminisce of that shit, man. Cause like, we all remember it. Like we've been broke. Like I, I, I remember not having a car. I remember not like, I've been trying to figure out how the fuck we're going to feed my, my kid and all that shit. So I do respect that, but that does, that's definitely a low ass <laughs> feeling watching your fuck. <laughs> you're like, you're like, uh, well, I don't know how we're going to get the baby home, but that's cool. <laughs> yeah. I remember that, man. That's a crazy time. I actually was supposed to be a CDL driver over HVAC, but I remember going to the program. I went to the program. I went like, cause I was at the time, I was in between jobs, unemployment, and the unemployment had like a program to where you go, they pay for your school and and stuff like that, man. I, I went there the first day, high as a kite. I did the first day they uh, drug test me. So sum it up by the, by the weekend, uh, they had to stand in hotels in Lancaster. To sum it up, they say I failed my drug test. I remember that day, my mom came pick me up. She looked me in my face. She said, "Boy, you's a dumbass," and just. We just took a drive home and it just really, reality hit me. Like, I, I just can't play any more games. I just got to get serious. I already finished school for HVAC. Why I'm not doing HVAC? Because at the time I couldn't get a job. I had a felony and a lot of big companies wouldn't hire me. They would never hire me. I did job applications, never got any callbacks. And I end up finding, um, it was a, a, a guy that had owned his own business. He's still my mentor now to this day. And he was working like two houses down from my mama house. And I just walked up to him, asked him like, hey, you do HVAC. I just graduated school, I'm, I'm looking for a job. And he ended up referring me to a, a guy who was uh, just turned 30, he just started his business and me and him got together. So that's how I ended up getting into the field with a job and learning everything. Cause I started at mom and pop. So I learned the business side and the HVAC side when I first started. And that's one thing too, and you know, starting, obviously starting at where I started at, I started at a big corporation, right? Whereas the opposite. Right? And I think, you know, I talk to a lot of guys all the time and they're like, how do you know all this shit in a short period of time? Well, I know a different side of the business, right? Like I didn't learn the technical side first. I learned, I got to see the sales of the business side and I'd be obviously became technical you have to figure that stuff out if you want to be successful. And, you know, I think that's, you know, it's just two different worlds, right? And then, and then I think that's what I, I talk to a lot of guys every day that they've never seen that world. The only world they know is, hey, something's broke, you go fix it. You fix it about five, five to nine, 10 units a day. And that's how you make your money. And then I try to teach them like, hey, there's other ways to make money. But then there's this clash of what they believe is right and what I believe is right. And, and it's always us like back and forth rather than like, hey, let's work together to make something that fits both sides of it, right? And I think that's my hardest thing that I, you know, that I do as a coach or a mentor or just anybody when people reach out to me, I'm like, well, do this. And they're like, what do you mean do that? It's a whole different yes, ball game. So you want to talk a little bit? It's kind of like it's, it's throwing them off because there's something they're not used to. Most guys that's coming in the field, they have to grind. They got to put in all these hours. And some, some like I had issues with certain jobs that I, cause get, get me wrong, I don't work for plenty of companies and it was always an issue as far as like moving up in different positions. So I did have guys that been doing HVAC installer for damn it 15, 20 years and they would not move them up to service tech. So it all depends on what, what your company you're working for, who you are, how you how you approach yourself as the like towards the owner or whoever's hiring you in that position. Yeah, and you have to you have to think about that too. Like if you are getting a job, right? Like even if you have a job, like what is what is your potential there, right? Like be realistic with yourself, man. Like some of you guys, like you guys are gonna work your ass off for some dude that wouldn't even give you no motherfucking opportunity and you don't you don't have that op that option, but you keep going every day. And I, I always challenge you guys, man, to like, dude, go I, I would say look if if I get an opportunity, I always wanna grow. 
Like if I can't really grow within a business, I'm out. Like I'll fucking see you later. Like thanks for everything. I'll move on to the next. I gotta have a path to get to somewhere I want to go, right? When when I started as a technician, I needed to know how to get to become a sales guy. And then I needed to figure out how to become an owner or general manager, and then an owner and all that shit. So I had to have a path. Otherwise You'd I, be stuck I, in I that can't do that. Box. You get stuck in the same thing. And I, I find so many guys that get stuck in these routes and then they don't want to have that. They don't even want to put themselves out there. Let's talk about it a little bit. Obviously, you got in the trade. You started as, you know, probably the bottom of the barrel, like grunt, yeah, grunt yeah. work and shit. What you doing for the first couple of years? It's like first couple you years, the when I first worked, it was a guy uh, named Thomas. His company was a solutions heat in the air. I was doing basically everything, duct work, install, and service. And then when I left him, I got with a, like a real company and they had me as like kind of like a technician, kind of like a maintenance technician. I did the maintenances and if it was like a repair or a major repair or a TXV or end of core, they, they have the senior techs to do the repairs. I'm the one who come in, tell the client what needs to be done and they have the senior techs to come repair it. So that's how I came up in the game. And that's a pretty common thing, right? Like obviously the, the maintenance techs, you got to get out there. You guys are kind of like the, the yeah, Trojan yeah, horse, right? Get in the, the door. And shit. Because shake the tree yeah. see if there's anything there you need there's those guys though you, you need those sales. guys because i mean if you don't know the systems you do a damn 10 maintenance a day you're gonna get learn the system and how it operates i talk to a lot of people all the time they're like why do i book tune ups like that's the learning round like that's where you get those you get those little base hits you get started understanding you start feeling comfortable because like there's so many different types of systems out there that every house every house is fucking different every house you go into like you have to have a certain amount of at bats before you really become comfortable yeah. right like I, I talk to a lot of guys they want to like hurry up from becoming a tech to nah, a sales guy like, you get comfortable learn your shit like I moved up fast, but like if you understood my knowledge is because I just dedicated every minute to it. Like I wasn't trying to fuck around. Like I remember when I, cause when I first got an A track, I, I had my daughter and when I had my daughter, I was like, I'm going to be sober. Like I don't want to fuck around. I'm going to be sober. I'm no drinking, no smoking, no nothing. Right. I ain't partying. All I did every fucking day was work. I was working, you know, 15 hours a day and I was at home, I was studying and, and I wanted to get better because I felt like once you got the technical side down, then you know, like when I went to a house after, I didn't want, I didn't want to have to worry about technical. If I'm worried about technical, I can't worry about sell. So I got the down and once you got the technical down, then you can start understanding that, like, okay, I know I can fix anything. Now I can focus on the customer, right? And so many guys, like they get the technical down, but they never transition to start focusing on the customer, understanding what they want, asking them the right questions, understand communicate how to sell, how to upsell, like stuff like that. And that's how you start making the real money. But they never turn that corner. They never change. They never change from what they what they're used to. Yeah, that's what's not going on. That's where the disconnect come from. You got guys who been technicians their whole life now, and they're owners, and they still a technician. Well, they also don't understand what it costs to run the business, right? And I talk to contractors every day, and like the first thing I always ask them is like, what What are the costs to run your business every day? Well, I don't, I don't know. You know, they 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 take a guess, and I said, well, that's the first thing I would go figure out. If I own a small business or any business today, I would figure out what it costs to run my business today, every single day, and then from there, I figure out what. I have to do to be able to break even and once I can break even how do I make profit right and so many people that don't even know what target what they what it costs to run their business so how do you have a target and then all of a sudden every day you're just chasing your ass because you don't know what it costs to run your business but you think you're making money you think you're doing it and you don't take the time to slow down and say hey no this this is how I make money okay now I got to you know first thing I always say is get to break even right once you get to break even then we can figure out how to start making profit but if you can't get to break even no there's no way to go to profit first that's true yeah. That makes sense. That's kind of like where I'm at right now, as far as like like I, me and uh, Jimmy Martin. He he really is one of the good guys in the field that take his time to explain things to people because I never had nobody to really like my mentor. He's a good guy. He molded me like as far as a man and showing me how to get my feelings out of business because sometimes I would have to deal with clients. They either like try to handle me some type of way or they just like was trying to like. I was young, so it's like they try to take advantage of me. Sometimes I'd be mad. I call him on the phone, angry, and the first thing he say is, "Control your emotions. Keep your emotions out of business." Uh, I know. I seen your. I seen your emotions, motherfucker. <laughs> shit. I just. I mean, I went out for something. I woke up the fuck. Dog, uh, you hey, were man, I woke up. With, I'm like, fuck hey, that night, night before, I'm chilling in bed, went to sleep, all fucking company and shit. I woke up. <laughs> It's just three hours ahead of me. You're on the East Coast. I'm like, I wake up, you know, eight o'clock. I'm like, oh, what's going on? I'm like, dude, this motherfucker, man. You got them emotions. Then I'm like, hey, take this down. You're like, how about you get fucking beat up? I'm like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. That was And I can see it, man, but it's also, it, that's learning, right? Like, that's part of yeah. maturity. Like, in, like I, I used to be the same way. Like, I used to be a fucking nightmare dude like you came to work with me you were yeah. my bitch and i treated people like shit oh, was, like i was flipping tables was one of them guys. i was absolute airflow 1.0 it was fucking crazy because i grew so fast right like i gambled and like people don't realize like i started with 10 grand then i turned into a five million dollar business in yeah. 12 months 
That takes a lot of fucking stress. I, I invested every dollar back in. So when motherfuckers weren't doing their job, I had to fucking make this deal today. Otherwise, I'm not going to fucking have yeah. a business. Like, I was a motherfucker. I, like, I wouldn't want to deal with me. Like, I, you saw me, you would look, if motherfuckers look the other way, right? And then I'm like, okay, well, I got to change this up. And I, like, yeah, the first couple of years, man, I just learned how to learn how to deal with people. Especially, you know, I started my business at 30. You're, you're, you're 32 right now. So you're like right when I first started changing into like, Hey, let's be professional. Hey, let's not talk to people like that. Hey, let's, you know, let's start making few people feel good about coming to work, not being scared <laughs> on their toes. It's a motherfucker, man. People look, cause people don't know what it costs to, the, what they it really the stress. Don't. They really don't. They think you're making money like hand over fist. I'm like, no bitch. I, I had to fucking borrow my personal credit card to pay fucking payroll today. And now I got to fucking pay equipment. And I got to, it's like, it takes a lot of shit, man. And, and I don't, I look back and I would never do what I did again. Yeah. That's for sure. It was a stressful fucking time. And I could have just grew nice and yeah, slow yeah, and yeah. chilled. Like we had great, Sold a lot of jobs. I had green margin. I chased that dopamine hit. Like for me, I feel like because I have really bad ADD, you I'm always chasing something. something and if I don't, have, I don't have something exciting, I get bored. Like that's why I gamble on these events and I gamble on you know new businesses and new shits because like that's my dopamine yeah, hit. Come. Now I'm learning to yeah. control it. It took me years. Yeah, like now I'm like, okay, I want that dopamine hit, but let's get it. Let's let's make sure that shit ain't heroin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Fuck. <laughs> That is true, man. That is true. So talk about it, man. So you got, you obviously started with this guy. How long did you work um, for that I dude I worked for him for about three, four years. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I always had it in my head that I was going to be my own boss because, like, it's bad word to say, but I hate someone controlling me, telling me what to do. So it was like when I had worked for different companies, I always had my business on the side. So it, was, it would never work. Like, I had jobs and got fired. Got another job got fired. The last job I had was Carolina Heat and Air, but they turned to service expert when they when they brought the company and it was like a franchise. Yeah. So I, I fixed one of my friends, uh, dad sports bar. The drain was fucked up, blew it out, but I didn't blow it all the way out. So he calling me while I'm on the job. Hey man, you need to call right now. This it's not working. I ain't come. Next thing I know, the uh, GM brought me in the office and said, like, hey, we got to let you go. He didn't give me a reason why, but I put two and two together because I did pull up on a job with the with the van before I went home and he seen who I was working with. So that was that was kind of like a bad idea. It's also like this, man. Like, you know, when you got you, we got one foot in the you know, water over here, one foot in the water over here. You're yeah. never you're never all in on anything. And I think that's like when I first started my business. So it was like beginning of August 2018. I went to my buddy's pizza shop. We had some beers literally like. I don't know, three or four or five IPAs. I don't know how many I dragged. I was pretty fucked up. But talking to my boy, we're like, hey, like, he's like, why don't you just start your own business? I'm like, that's a good idea. Like, literally, I was like, I'm like, that's not like a good idea. And I'm like, I never started a business. I don't know what it, I don't know what it costs. I don't know how to start an LLC. I don't know how to do any of that shit, right? Like, I, I never done it before. I, went, I literally went home that night. I got on my stomach on my my living room floor. I was, I was still drinking more beers. I'm like, pretty fade. I'm not writing down business names and all this shit, right? And then, you know, next day, like, you know, I'm like, I came up with a name. I'm like, boom, let's do it. For the next couple of days, like, I'm like, I'm going to start my business. And I'm like, well, I still got to go to work. And I was really trying to wait till the 15th of August because I was supposed to get like a 5000 or $10,000 bonus. I don't remember what it was, but it was, like, it was a pretty significant bonus I was supposed to wait for. And I was like, okay, I'll get that bonus. Then I'll start the business. But I was like, dude, I went to work and I'm like, I can't do this. Like I either either have to quit now or whatever. And and, and my brother actually is the one that <laughs> made me pull the trigger to Mike, Mike, like, fuck this shit. Let's start our job. He's like, all right, fuck yeah. And Mike drives to the office. Mike, big Mike drives to the office and quits. I'm like, Mike, what the fuck? I like, I got away from my bonus. He's like, ah, oh, fuck it. I already turned the truck in. I'm like, all right, then I'm in too. Fuck it. <laughs> I drove and turned my shit in. And like the next day, boom, I fucking, I started texting everybody on my phone. Hey, I started a business. By the next day, we already had an install. Boom. Ended up. And then it's all in. I, I had no choice. At that point. Yeah. I always say it's like the, like this, it's like the story, like uh, burn the ships, right? Like y'all, you already know that, right? There's a Spanish sailor, right? And he is, he was leading his team into battle. They were going to go take over this island, right? And so the guy, they pull up to the island. Boom, they're getting ready to unload. They unload their shit about the charges island. As a, the team starts getting off the boat and they start heading towards the island, Hernan Cortez turns around and lights the boats on fire. And he's like, hey, we're either going to take this island or we're going to yeah. fucking die. Those are your choices. Right? And that's what happens when you go all in on something. It allows you to, right, to, to go all in and all your focus. And guess what? You are probably going to win because you got no other choice. choice. Yeah. You got no other choice. Win or fail. So then, okay, so you you fucked up. You did some side work, got caught. Next thing you know, you got to start. You start your business. What uh, year was that? That was two. How you bring you bringing it back, boy? I think that was like two thousand. I think sixteen or seventeen. At that time, I was like twenty three, twenty four. At the time, I didn't know shit. I had a. I brought. I remember this because I uh, I didn't have a car at the time, a work truck. So I ended up buying a a, a four range, a stick shift. I didn't know how to drive the fucking stick shift. I, 
I pulled, I pulled up to the, the guy off Facebook, me and him friends to this day, and we laugh about it. He, he didn't tell me it was stick shift until I had got dropped off down there 30 minutes from where I stayed, and he was like, it's a stick shift. I'm like, oh, I don't want to buy it. He's like, man, come on, it's, I'll teach you. So he took me in a, uh, it was a, a mall from the apartment that he stayed in. He took me, showed me how to put it in neutral, put it in first gear, and shift it. Man, I think I stalled out about like 10 times going back home through the highway, man. I think I stalled out. Well, that that's kind of funny, because I actually same thing happened to me. I've I got on Craigslist. I bought a Ford Ranger and the same thing as a stick. I didn't know how to drive that shit. I ended up driving it home and I had the same thing stalled out a bunch. I got it back and then like I started having all kinds of issues with it, dude. And, I, and so my story ended up completely. You're still always with this guy. I want to beat this motherfucker's ass. So I called I called him. I was like, hey, dude, this shit ain't working. He's like, he's like, you already bought it. I'm like, dude, I should, I'm like, I bought it from your office. You, you I know you another fucking crazy story. Like, all right. So I had, yeah, I had like, the I'm, Ford Ranger doing good with it. <laughs> Business got slow as shit. Business got slow. It got real slow. So I, I went to go get a title loan. I never do that. That's why I pay for things cash. If I got it, I pay for it cash, nothing. I end up getting a title loan on it. And then I think I got behind like two payments or something like one payment or something like that. I woke up the next day, my truck was gone. <laughs> <laughs> this is two times, two. It's called, it's called, that's called a yeah. cycle though. So low. So like I don't in, in circle back because I remember like so in twenty shit I was living in when I was living in Cleveland I wanted to get back to Ca I wanted to get back to Cali for or to Vegas for my for Mike's wedding right and I was working two hours two shitty ass I was working the oil change job and then I go across the street and I work at Arby's for like five four hours a night I'd, I'd have to work so I was working like I don't know sixteen hours a day in Ohio just trying to like I was trying to stack up some cash so I could go to Michael's wedding so I was working I was doing that and I ended up taking one of those fucking payday loans and <laughs> took a payday loan to be able to go to Mike's, go to fly out to Vegas for Mike's wedding and I got to learn real quick and with how much money those motherfuckers take so you get yeah, stuck in the cycle thank that's god that's like, like you don't want to go that's what a lot of business yeah you get do. that vicious like well it's the same it's the same thing in business right like you get those you get those loans they like here borrow 300 one, grand one and more pay story. back this i did that, that one time before i never do that shit again it was a betty advance place they gave me the money and then they took the they withdraw money every day monday through friday I never do that again. I never do that again. They still hit me up and text message me every day about getting a loan. I'm like, hell no. If that's not a loan, that's distortion. There's a lot of guys that, you know, there's a lot of guys that yeah. are taking those loans. And I, I take those loans starting out too, but I but I was real, I would try to be smart with it. So I take I would take half of it and I'd use half of it for growth and I'd leave the yeah, other half so of the bank. Yeah, so they could take withdrawal. So I yeah. could the problem is like a lot of guys that get that money, they use every <laughs> fucking penny of it. And they're like, oh fuck, we got to pay this back. And, and guess what? So when COVID hit, when COVID hit, obviously like shit, yeah. business stopped. I had one of those loans. Have you ever not paid one of those loans? No, See what I happened? never. I, I never got. I paid it off. I was so happy when I paid it off. I said, "Damn, I never do this again." You think the car repo guy is bad? You got some gangster guy from New York calling me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut down your business. I'm gonna start calling your customers. I'm gonna tell all your employees <laughs> you're broke. I'll do it. I'll shut down your phone line, your credit card processing. I'm like, dude, I'm just trying to fucking survive. Bro. Like the whole company, the whole country shut down, dude. Like, fuck, oh. I, I will pay you yeah. back. Dude, like, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, but that's yeah, that was it. Was that was I'm like I'm trying to face like yeah I'll shut down your credit card processing tomorrow. I'm like holy shit like then I'm like then I really can't pay you dog. Like what do you mean like shut down my credit card processing? You didn't get no money like, that much. So no, he, you know there's a lot of guys that are listening that bet yeah. the same shit and he, and. and I try to be an open book, man. Like none of this shit was rainbows and cupcakes. Everyone's like, "Oh, fucking dude, nothing was given to me, man." I've been taking care of my parents. I started taking care of my parents when I was eighteen. Take care of my mom's. You know, my dad. My dad used to work for me when I first started the business. You know, he passed away, and you know, so for me, like I'm, I'm the money guy in my family. Like everybody comes to me when they got problems, and then I'm the same way with business and life. And like, yeah, I got like every day, all day is fucking hand out to me. But ain't nobody opens. Like if I had a problem tomorrow, ain't nobody else me. Exactly. I think everybody go through that problem when they level up in life. It's just. Everybody, it don't matter what color yeah. you is or what background you come from. I think everybody, no, everybody dude, goes. They'll throw me at this second. This if I if, if I fucking fumble tomorrow, something happened, dude. Everybody that everybody on the internet would throw me under the bus. Everybody act like, oh, I fucking told you, fuck that guy. Instead of understanding like all the good that I did, they only they only see what they want to see, man. So like that's like circles back. So like when I see, when I see people like bash me, I'm like, first off, fuck you, like because I'm like I work my ass off. Like this is how I support my family. So people see, like, if we had this story you know, like, before, we've been more cool. I would understand because from. I'm seeing it from social media side, so I never really got to really talk to you one on one. So it's kind of different because you look like you got it well put together, but that goes to show like you never know what someone's going through, get to where they at in life. So it's crazy, man. So like I have like 
I had to, like, I had the guy, the, the jo- Josh Crouch guy, man, like last year, like we're like a month before the event, before my event and he starts bashing my event, talking shit. I'm like, first off, I gave you free tickets last year. Now you're bashing my event. I already knew what we had planned. And it's like, dude, like don't fuck with like, I don't go on the, I don't go on business and start bashing people's shit because I know what it costs. Like I wouldn't go to one of my competitors and start blowing up their fucking, giving bad reviews and shit like that. Cause I know what it takes to run a business. Like you don't fuck with me, don't fuck with me. Just don't talk shit. So I'm not mad at you. I never, I don't get, I don't get mad. I just, I just like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna fuck you want to mess around. <laughs> and the same thing with the mean shit. Like I enjoyed the mean <laughs> shit was just funny to me. I pulled it last time. And, and so like a lot of people like they're like hey are you really mad at Willie like dude, I got I got respect for Willie Willie's a fucking hustler he's like me man and, and you know obviously it is more difficult to be a fucking black contractor it is more difficult to be you know to to have to not have the opportunities and I know that like I grew up we were the only white family and like I grew up with a ghetto I was like we were like the only white family in the hood I spoke Spanish until I was fucking I don't know seven or eight years old fluently because everybody around me spoke Spanish like people don't understand like I didn't grow up with a bunch of money my mom was the oldest of eight kids. We lived in a fucking in the ghetto ass neighborhood growing up. Like I never like you know my mom. Thank God she she got into sales and she think she's what taught me sales. So like she she gave me the opportunity to understand sales as a young kid. She kind of sold her way out of the ghetto, yeah. right? And then I you know there like my parents ended up losing their house. They got divorced and I started taking care of everybody else. But you know I have to say I have a similar story where people just think like everything was spoon fed to me. But like you know my real story. You're like. Oh shit! First off, I will hit him. I will hit a motherfucker in the mouth because that's how I grew up. Like, I, I, uh, we, we throw an ass, we throw an hand. I don't give a fuck. Like, you want to fuck around and find out? Like, I had a guy the I had a guy the other day. He said something to me. I was like, look, I was like, I'm like, I got the money to bail myself yeah. out, dog, and I got the money to lawyers too. So, like, which part you want? What, what hand do you want to get hit with? I don't give a fuck. Well, let's talk about that, man. Let's, you know, this is an important yeah. topic, right? I, I just had a podcast earlier and we're talking about women mm-hmm. in the trades, right? I've done a real good job of bringing the women up in the trades. But when you talked about that the other day, I was like, I haven't brought the brothers up. I haven't brought the Hispanic guys on stage. Like, well, I brought, I let Ishmael on stage. That's enough Spanish guys on the stage. That motherfucker <laughs> crazy. No, but at the end of the day, like there, there is another, there's another part of the industry that hasn't been represented the right way. And I'd like to talk about that. I'd like to figure out who we can put up there. Like who's that motherfucker that y'all look up to or, or want to be like, I want to help that. I want to help y'all get off stage too, I would you know? say um I'm talking to Jonathan and Derek. Derek Lee out in um I think he's in PA. Uh, he's Derek Derek's Derek's yeah, a homie. He's, I like he's Derek. good. He's real humble. So he's like in the background. He really talks highly about you. There's a lot of guys that talk highly about you. Jonathan, Derek, those the first two I really met. Everybody else I'm still trying to pull together because it's like when I look left and right, when I go to these events, I don't see many people that look like me. And it's just like I have a lot of DMs of young kids wanting to get into the field. And it just reminds me like, damn, I was that kid. I was that kid looking for opportunity. I have no, I had nobody to like reach out to. I just had to figure it out on my own. So it's like now that I'm in this position and when I get to a higher position, I could know there could be someone that like, hey, if he like, I get messages all the time. Hey, I, I appreciate your clips or videos and stuff like that. Cont- I just started my content creative with HVAC. I say, damn, I want to be a content creator, but I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. What is something that I do every day, HVAC, okay? I was laughing the other day at the one you had where you're like, is your word buying today or something like that? And you're like, <laughs> and you might have disappeared. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They told me not to do that on my on my same page that I make sales from. So I just. <laughs> there are some good guys. Like there's actually, you know, one of my good friends, he actually used to work for me. He's, he's actually going to be at the event. His name's Landon Charles. And he started with me at the same company. And I watched him and, and Landon's got talent, right? And I watched Landon not get the opportunities yeah. that I got. I watched Landon get treated differently than I got treated. I watched it. Like he's, he's, I mean, like he's a good friend of mine. And so like when he, when I left the company, you know, he kind of followed me to the next company I was at and then he kind of did his own thing for a little bit. And then when I started Absolute, I brought him in. I was like, hey, I want you to come work for me. And, you know, I gave him the opportunity. Like the other companies wouldn't give him the opportunity to sell. They would just let him be a yeah. turnover tag. So I said, hey, let me, let me give you the opportunity to sell. Guess what? He excelled in it, right? He did, he did a great job. And he treated my customers good and everybody liked him. And, but I saw it for the last, for the years, like these are my friends that I've seen them not get the same opportunities. And it's, it's a real thing. My other friend, Shaq, Shaq, I call him the happy gap because he has a big old gap ass teeth, but that's my homie. You probably listen to this right now, but you know, Shaq was the same way, man. He got out of the military. He came into the same, same company I was at. They just treated him like a, like a grunt rather than treating him like the guy that, you know, to give him the opportunities. Now, maybe he wasn't as good of a sales guy as maybe B or Landon, but he should have had the same opportunity. And I watched it. And I also watched the customers. So I would ride with it. Like they would come do ride alongs with me. And you know the same thing. Like you see, the customers act different, and it, and people don't realize that it is, it, it's a it's a it's already you're already going in up an yeah, uphill battle, right? Before you get to the door, 
like a fucking Boy Scout coming in. You know what I mean? It's like you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta battle that. You gotta battle. You're not getting the opportunity. I think they feel more comfortable they, once, like they they know that you're knowledgeable about what you're doing. Once they feel like you're knowledgeable and you are like, like when I go through a client house, like you say, I, I don't, I don't do the talking. I let them talk and I respond. I'm more of a responsive guy. I don't demand anything. I say, hey, how can I help you? How, I'm a problem solver. I come in as a problem solver. I want to solve your problem. So when I leave this house, kind of like a Chick-fil-A service, that's why I have almost over 200 five stars. A lot of people, I'm a one man show and I have so many five star reviews because I try to like, these people are what's going to feed me. That's how I think of it. Like, I need these people to call, have their uncle, cousins, uh, 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 grandma. I need the whole family to call, use me because you are the people that's going to pay for my lights in this house without it. This lights would be off. I would be outside on the porch, homeless. So I take that heave as a business owner and treat my clients like. I'll tell you a fucked up story with Lil Landy when he was working for me during the the COVID, like when they were doing like, I don't know if you ever saw the riots they had in Long Beach and you probably had some riots out by you and all that shit. And, and during that, the George Floyd riots, so like Long Beach was fucking a, a mecca, right? Here. I mean, it was, they were burning down buildings and all kinds of shit. And, and Landon was working in Long Beach one of the days they were doing one of the, day, one of the riots. And dude, he was just literally getting his, his ladder out of the work truck and he got the cops called out. It's like, dude, this motherfucker got his ladder, he's got his work uniform all looking clean cut. Like they called, they called the cops on him because he was black no. in their neighborhood. Yeah. And and that's kind of shit that you don't deal with. Like you, no one else has to deal with. It. People don't realize it. It's like, dude, he he ain't doing. He was doing yeah. nothing wrong. A cop showed up. What are you doing here? He's like, dude, I'm fucking working. What do you mean? Uh. And so it, it it is it is a real thing. It is it is something that needs to be brought up, and people need to understand that, that there is there is a, a uphill battle for 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 you guys. And it's it's, it's a fucked up thing. It needs to change, yeah. in my opinion. So yeah, I, I definitely. But dude, when you brought it up, like I, I do believe that I would like to have more people on stage that represent that that look like you because I think that we need to bring as many people into the trade as possible. Yeah, I think we definitely do great because op- I'm not sure what the next generation going to do. I mean, they got to They're going to be doing TikTok <laughs> videos all day. <laughs> all that shit, job security because they ain't nobody knows how to yeah. fix shit. Like you think anything? You think one of the Gen Z guys is going to fix a fucking fix an air conditioner, run and dug? Like Brandon, come on, you bro. Go like, have to get replaced. You you saw what's what's his, what's that what's the guy the quarterback fucking Caleb Williams wearing fucking pink nail polish pink cell phone <laughs> one of the, one of the like, dude uh, got a sponsorship from the nail uh, company and he wearing them uh, blue and blue and white fingernail polish on his hands I'm like man you can go work at affordable ain't working for me <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to change my damn name speaking of that I need it I'm re- well, you, let's let's talk a little bit about that man so obviously you didn't your business affordable that's always been you know everybody so, always gives so you shit so how I got my like, name my mentor company name was affordable and at the time I had a uh doing business as and then when I tried to go how I do an LLC all I, my company was all pro heat in the air but it was so many names coming there so I called my mentor I said hey what you think about if I do your name and my name pro affordable pro and he was like oh it's cool but I didn't it used to get me mad because I talked to Gene one time and he was like man that's after I talked to you like yeah y'all need to change your name I right, talk to Jane, change your name, talk to, uh, when I finally got, change your name, and I'm like, change your name, change my name, I'm like, God damn, man, I'm, just, I'm doing all right. But then now I'm finally realizing like, bro, I get all the clients that I don't want. That's why sometimes I be mad because like, damn, like some people don't value who you are. They just value the, the flat rate price. And that's, that's just physically what it's, what it's gonna be with them sometimes, man. And it's just kind of frustrating because like, damn, I paid 12 years in the game. I've been working hard. Why I'm not in a different position? And it kind of get frustrated with me sometimes, but as an owner, you still got to keep your composure no matter what. Yeah, and then I saw the one, I remember there's like a video you had where the lady was like yelling at you in oh, the house you remember and shit. That? You're like- Oh yeah, she was, she was back crazy. I think I did a, a new duck system with her in a UV light. And I forgot what she said. She thought I did do the duck work. So I, I knew she was kind of like, yeah, you know, some clients like, oh, okay. She, they wanted them. So she got her shoes, crawled up under the house. This is when I had got with House Call Pro and I finally had finances because she was doing financing. And she was like, well, I'm not going to uh, uh, do the contract. And I already done did the work. So I was like, man, you, you, you said you agree to this. You signed this. Uh, let me go ahead and, uh, Call, call the law and she just signed that right fast, like right fast and, and I got the money. I haven't talked to her since, since then. Get the money, yeah, I don't wanna talk to that bitch. <laughs> I gotta fucking put that up, put that up the That DNC was one of my first number. financing job with House Call Pro, it was with Wise Tech, cause it was integrated with, with House Call Pro, so yeah, that was a wild one right there. I had my experience with wild clients, man. 
wild ones. Well, that's good. And so, you know, I, I saw you see, you had, you had the conversation with, uh, I think it was Jimmy, man. And it sounds like you got, you're looking to, you're looking to grow the business. Like where, where do you see, where do you see the business, you know, three, four, five years from now? Uh, where I see the business is just like, once I do the rebrand and when I'm finally realizing you could do something for a long time and see no progress. And then someone that's doing it for a short time and got more progress than you. So basically, I've been working in the wrong system for a long time and it didn't finally realize it too. And I appreciate you for what you, everything you've done for me because I didn't know other guys around the world and how they maneuver and how they work until I end up going to that Profit Rocket show and I started talking amongst other people. So now I know people in California. Now I know people in Texas. Now I know people in New York, Virginia. And we talk amongst each other with different owners. I have plenty of owners that reach out to me and give me advice. So it's like, man, it really woke me up. And something in my spirit that woke me up like, damn, I'm really working the wrong system. Maybe I need to change around because I don't want to be that fucking guy that does it for years and have nothing to show for it. Just a fucking beat up van and a little bit of money. No, that's that ain't what I want. Yeah, man. I think that's kind of the power of the events. You know, like a lot of people like the things on stage, man. And I look at the events like because I, I used to go to events when I first started my business and I had, I wanted to get around people that are doing big shit. And and just getting getting out there and you get to meet with people, you get to interact, you get to understand like a lot of people are going through the same struggles you are. Or they've already been through trying to get out of it and you have those conversations. And I think that's really the power of the events more than anything is is the network, right? Because the better your network is and you can start working together. And, I mean, I, I'm in group chats with people all over the country. Some people I talk to in Australia, uh, obviously Canada, stuff like that. Like I'm, I talk to people like, you saw the amount of messages I go out to every day, but each person that I talk to, even if I, they're asking me for help, I'm learning something from that, right? Because they'd be like, hey, I have this problem. I'm like, how would I come up? How would I fix that problem? Okay, well, maybe other people having that problem now i want to put i want to make a video for the blueprint right and then like you know recently like i had the conversation with my team man i was like man i gotta make i gotta make the blueprint affordable for everybody so i said okay if you got under 10 employees i'm gonna make it 500 bucks a month so you can have access to all my shit every sop job training everything you can have like i have so much shit in there i'm like like 500 bucks like yeah if they're under 10 employees they get 500 bucks a month because i want more people to see the other side of business to understand the financials understand how all the operations and all that shit my team thinks i'm crazy but i think i'm like there's more people under 10 employees than there are over 10 employees and how do we get those guys below 10 employees and get them to grow? Because once they start growing is when they can spend more money with you, do bigger things, business. I'm a long-term, I'm like, I always say it's about LTV, right? L lifetime value. I want that customer to keep coming back and wanting to do business with me. I want them to feel like I helped them. Because if I go and take all their money up front and I didn't help them, how are they going to feel about me? They're going to feel shitty. And that's that's my big thing, man. Like, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here for a long time. I, you know, and I, and I always say like, I'm more of a legacy at this point than anything else. Like I want to build a legacy of people that I helped along the way. Uh, so, man, like I said, I, I wanted to bring you on this podcast to obviously clear the air on all that stuff. You're actually doing something that nobody's doing, man. And as bad as it is, it's a good thing because somebody got to do it. Nobody's willing to take that risk. So if anybody could talk down, they don't understand the foot that the pressure really much is the pressure of doing it. Just doing it every day. Fuck it. I, I want someone to sell at someone else loses <laughs> 1.2 million. Shows up to that, like, said, I should have been jumping off a bridge. <laughs> shit. Well, like I, I, I'm a, I'm a very, I'm a very, uh, I'm an optimistic yeah, person, man. Like, I always think I can figure out at anything. I, I don't care what position I'm in. I'll, I'll find a way. I'm, I'm not like a cockroach, man. I can't kill me. Um, but Willie, man, I, I, I want to say thanks for coming on. Thanks for telling your story. Um, is there anything you want to leave the audience with before jumping off? Hey, man, leave Victor the hell alone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a, I'm a witty motherfucker, too. I, you look, you look, I got a PhD in shit talking, yeah. so like, I, I will go back and forth all day if you don't get it. I'm like, no, don't like, don't fuck with me, man. I'm going to fuck around and find out. But Willie, man, I respect you. I respect what you're doing. I, I'm, I love watching your business. I love supporting you. Uh, I'd love to have you back out at the event this year. If you want to come out, I got a ticket waiting for you. I'd love to see you get out there. I know a lot of people would love to see you. You make a lot of people laugh. You will follow your story. So just keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep plugging away and let me know and, if there's anything one I can help thing, with. I appreciate and, you. And I, and I like bottom of my heart, I, I, I apologize. Like I'm at the point of my life where like I want peace and um, I'm not afraid to, you know what I'm saying, own up to my mistakes as a man. I don't have no pride issue. If I'm wrong, if I'm in the wrong, correct me. That's the people I want around me. You know, and I and I appreciate you. No problem, brother. And well, if you guys enjoyed this podcast, remember that I don't I don't take sponsorships on this podcast. So like, share, subscribe, get other people involved. Obviously, I was trying to get as many reach as possible. Get that EBITDA up, right? Uh, and you know, I'll put out one last promo. May first through third, uh, Dallas, Texas. I got an amazing event. I got Rick Ross performing. I got over forty different speakers that have done badass stuff in this industry that are growing big businesses, doing big things. I want to teach you that. Then come get around a bunch of winners, man. The more winners you're around, the more often you can win. So go to uh, call for 
ProfitRocket.com. Get your tickets today while you still can. I'll see you guys in Dallas. It's going to be amazing. Willie, man, thanks again for coming on. Appreciate you, man. All right, brother. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you, guys. Thank you.